I asked Xiao Wei Gong where robots are being used most. He's a project scientist at the Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute. Robots have many different applications. For now, most of the applications are in industrial applications. For example, automobile assembly, uh, automobile painting. But with the artificial intelligence um, is growing and getting better and better, we expect many robots can start getting to people's home and for applications like uh, doing all these home services. Let me ask you about one of the projects that your team's working on, which is a robotic snake. Uh, can you talk to us about your work and, and how might uh, that be beneficial? So um, we have a wonderful collaboration with um, people from Georgia Tech who are both a biologist and a physicist. We look at how biological systems move and extract data from these biological systems. By analyzing these data, we can learn models from how these biological systems work to make our snake robot work better as well. So a lot of these um, fundamental understanding um, in terms of mechanics, in terms of the neural mechanical control of these biological systems can be very beneficial um, for many different types of robotic applications. Snake have many joints, like 150-ish joints, which is very difficult to control them simultaneously which definitely poses a great engineering challenge for robotic systems by looking at how snakes can control hundreds of joints simultaneously we will uh, develop better control algorithms to let a robot have hundreds of joints to work perfectly as well. Fascinating stuff. Uh, researchers developing uh, robotics technology are different than the people who end up as end users. Um, any worries at all or concerns about potentially dangerous applications? So, yes, yeah, so a lot of technologies can be used for bad purposes, really depending on how the user intend to use these technologies. For example, imagine some of the military drones be uh, used by some dictator. It's very possible they can use these weapons to do bad things. And you had mentioned uh, robotics being used in, in manufacturing of cars, that sort of thing, which is where we tend to see them. Um, it's interesting. Citigroup used uh, World Bank data to come up with some uh, figures in, in, in terms of uh, people being replaced in the workforce by robotics uh, in several countries. It says 85% of Ethiopia's workforce is at risk of being replaced by automation. In China, the number is 77%. But Thailand, India, South Africa, Argentina, and Nigeria, all above the OECD average. What do you think is likely to happen to the human, human workforce over the next uh, generation or two as robotics uh, invade our, our space, so to speak? So I think the development of robotics industry is not revolutionary. It's more like progressive. As technology start entering our life, it, of course, will start taking over some of the labor-intense jobs but simultaneously, it will also start producing new jobs for people as well. So people can start spending more time on um, more um, technically challenging or more requires more crea uh, creativity jobs. So you don't see this as one of those things where we see it in uh, so many science fiction films where it's man against machine. You kind of seen it, see an evolution for the robotics, but also an evolution for uh, the workers themselves. Yeah, that's definitely my belief because I am more imagining a world for a lot of these dirty jobs can be handled by these machines while you can spend a lot more time doing artwork, um, doing social service, so on and so forth. Chao Wei Gong joining us from Pittsburgh. Thanks so much.